So, your uncle. What's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him. Watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course. But I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. But Jeremy didn't kill himself. Is that why he's at your setup? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis, figuring he might stumble upon some cure. You mentioned the letter. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to get him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Well, here we are. My uncle's not well, Mr. Carnby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part in this? You couldn't get a cab? I just wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What exactly are we going to do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first. abandoned. It can't be. There has to be someone around. Wait here. I'll go around back. Thanks. What are you doing? Who are you? Whoa, pardon me, excuse me. My name is Edward Carnby, private investigator. I hope you don't mind we let ourselves inside. I do mind. This is private property. You can't just barge in here. I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. It's urgent, and no one was answering the door. We can't hear you knocking anymore. None of us can. Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy. Am I right? She has that. Hartwood gloom, doesn't she? That's right. I'm Emily Hartwood. I just came to make sure my uncle is all right. Well, he is unavailable right now. You will have to come back another day. Unavailable? How? Is he sleeping? We can wait. He's lost. Don't I know you from somewhere? Who's your man again, Miss Hartwood? My name's Edward Carnby, private investigator. Splendid. Enough! All of you, get back to your rooms! The coffee, keep your eyes on the child. And you two, please leave immediately. Look, we're not here to cause any trouble. Just let us see the old man, satisfy the curiosity of my client here, and we'll be off. 
Jeremy has gone missing. There's no need to worry, but it might be some time before he turns up. The whole staff is looking for him. What? He ran off? I don't have time for any of this. Please, come back tomorrow. All right, in that case, we'll just wait in his room. You don't mind, do you? It's upstairs, right? Wait, you can't. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. In the corridor. It's the first door on your left. I'll tell Dr. Gray you're here. Excellent. Thank you, madam. Look around. See if we can dig up any clues. Hey, you know anything about this? Looks like some sort of talisman. No, I don't. Oh, help me out here, will you? I want to kill the guy, throw some of this stuff out. I'd be crazy too if I had this much junk lying around. Oh wow. That's striking. I want to save this one. See Dr. Gray. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I'm coming. Miss Hartwood. Emily? Your store? There are no owners here. We both strangers in Jeremy's store. Jeremy did this. How? The pack with the dog man. Jeremy warned us, but we didn't think much of it. I'm Detective Edward Carnby. I was hired by Jeremy's niece to find him. Oh yeah? How much you paying you? $150. <laughs> She's sure getting her money's worth of that. You would thank your man, Compare. No, nah, not if I can help it. You know, I think Jeremy's hiding in a way we can't find him. He has this juju necklace that guides him. The talisman? That's right. It's some magic charm he got from Miss Jackson down the street. The voodoo priestess? You know surprising things, Compare. Yeah, the Mama Loa. Here, take the key. I locked the gate to save her place from all the ghouls and goblins getting inside. Maybe if you go there, you could find some clues to show you the way. Thanks. I'll have a look. Detective, I was wondering when you were going to show up. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. I understand you are working for Jeremy Hartwood's niece. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're not wrong. 
We came here for her uncle. I just didn't expect... I didn't expect this. You are Dr. Gray, right? That's right. You don't happen to have some identification, Detective. I'm not keen on having strangers prying into my business. Oh, Detective Edward Carnby, Decatur Street, New Orleans. Enjoying the view carré, Detective? Those old French quarters, the voodoo people, the gangsters. I'm sure you live an exciting life. Well, that's not quite like the stories, Doc. Just trying to make a living. Aren't we all making a living? Well, welcome to Dossetto, Detective. I hope your time here will be useful. Now, what can I do for you? Why don't you tell me where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? <laughs> Why wouldn't that make for a short visit? I wish I could tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know. A drink, Detective? Anything brandy. Oh, you do belong in the French quarters, Detective. Armagnac or cognac? You know, just give me the cheap stuff. I'm not much of a connoisseur. Having low standards is not a virtue, Detective. Let me see if I can broaden your perspective. What can you tell me about Jeremy? I wouldn't want to go into details about his condition. Doctor-patient confidentiality. I'm sure you understand. Sure. But he is crazy. And he's gone missing. Why? Here. Try this. Ooh, it's good. Got a bite? Hmm. It's called a sidecar. The trick is not to be afraid of the tartness of the lemon. Then, for goodness sake, don't overdo the triple sec. Okay, what can you tell me about Jeremy? Ah, well, let me think. He is an anxious man, constantly worried about events not presenting themselves according to his model of predestination. He complains about things not being carried out in the right order, and that some things simply shouldn't be. Is any of this helpful to you? Uh, not really. Uh, I was hoping for some direction where to look next. I'm sorry. I have nothing for you then. You should talk to my orderlies. They have been looking for him for a while now. I'm sure they would appreciate your help. Yeah, I ran into Batiste earlier. Come to think of it, he... He might have given me a lead. Oh, excellent. So your investigation is already underway. I'm gonna go, but I'm sure we'll meet again. Looking forward to it. Safe returns. Detective Carnby, how did you... where did you go? I was just talking to Dr. Gray. You disappeared. No, it's not what you think. Have you... have you found anything strange going on here? Yes. Everyone is being incredibly evasive and I can't figure out why. No, I mean something you can't explain. Paranormal, even. Detective? I really need you to get yourself together. I can't do this alone. Forget it. I'll figure it out. Do you want to come see Dr. Gray? No. I want to I want to try something you know, with this talisman. I think I can follow Jeremy, the place he mentioned in the book. What was the name? Do you remember something Spanish? Taroea. Yeah, that's where I need to go. Detective, are you going to be all right? Yeah, of course. Go talk to Dr. Gray. We'll rendezvous later. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, Detective. Didn't mean to obstruct justice or anything. That's fine. You know, I'm kind of busy with my own case of a missing person. I was wondering if you've seen Grace, girl about yay high. I can't say that I have. Why are you asking? 
Well, I'm looking for her. Is she in trouble? No, 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 no. Uh, she's just uh, hiding somewhere. But we can't have a rascal like that running around unchecked at a time like this, you understand? Well, I haven't seen her. Well, uh, let me know if you find her. I'll be around. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for your man, Jeremy. You scratch my back, detective, and I'll scratch yours. Don't come any closer. I'm armed. Get that thing out of my face. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm just a detective trying to find something called Tarawea. You after Jeremy too? Why? I'm working for his niece. She wants to make sure he's all right. He might be unharmed, but far from all right. He's a curse upon DeSetto. Oh, here we go again. Quiet. out there you drawing something nothing special I'm just bored do I know you from somewhere I remember you mr. Conby from where don't touch that Cassandra wouldn't like it she wouldn't like it at all do you know where she is I'd rather not talk about it it makes me upset Besides, she'll be back after the Feast of St. John. You think? Yep. It's all on the page, Mr. Conby. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. I'm gonna go now, if that's okay. I don't like to stay too long in the same place. Mr. McCoffee might find me. Hey. Is he mean to you? Not everyone needs to be saved, Mr. Conby. You should know that by now. Detective Conby, how good of you to come. Let me pour you a drink. 
What happened here? This place looks like it was hit by a bomb. <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse, detective. Thanks. Did the ceiling just collapse? I heard it was something in the attic. Something that was supposed to happen, but didn't. How that could have such consequences is beyond me. The truth is, I don't know why the room looks like this. But I bet your friend Jeremy does. You know where I could find him? Oh, somewhere in his past, I suppose. He keeps going on about that mysterious dark man. I think he is hiding from him. Or maybe he's with him. I can't really keep up. I don't worry much. Take a look around this room. You may think it looks spectacularly devastated, but I just think it's finally found its stride. <laughs> it fits perfectly with the state of this place and its... loonies. The same goes for the nonsense with Jeremy. In my eyes, we finally managed to match the wild ride inside all of us. Well, I'm happy you find the evening so harmonious. I, uh... Hope you don't mind me setting things right. Jeremy's business, that is. This room looks beyond my capabilities. Good luck, detective. Hope to see you again soon. Yeah. Evening, miss. Kitchen. I assure you. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Promise I didn't, you, I, Mr. Hartwood is I nowhere near my for... kitchen, and neither should you be. Don't make I, me I kick you out to... of this house. Sorry. Now get out. Please don't touch her. Jeremy. What are you doing here? Everyone's looking for you. I know. It, it's all a big mess. No one understands. I, I'm just trying to keep evil at bay. Just for a little while longer. You've got to come back with me. Your niece is waiting at Dorsetto. Emily? Why would you... My letter. <gasps> I'll keep making it worse. What is going on, Jeremy? How is any of this happening? I made... I made a terrible promise with some... The Dark Man. Who is he? No, 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 don't say his name! He can hear us! He's always listening. Jeremy... I need to understand what is going on. I promised him everything. The sun rises, I will be chained in his sunken desert temple for an eternity. But at least the evil about to awaken and to settle won't harm anyone outside of that cursed place. You're acting crazy, Jeremy. I want to help. There's nothing you can do. Then what's all the business about Terawea? Why did you want to go there? Well, I can't go there. I'm not allowed. But you wanted to. Can I go? Tell me, will it help me to break your pact? Is there something there that would help? Why would you give me hope? That's so cruel. Okay. Sounds like we're onto something here. What should I- Look out! Behind you! Run! Don't let him take you! Ugh! 
I'm glad to see you made it. I had my doubts, but the hope you instilled has yet abandoned me. I guess this must be Tarawea. Who are you? My name is Juan Luis Jorge, and this is indeed the convent of Tarawea. You'll have to excuse me, but Yermi never got your name. The name's Edward Carnby. I'm a private investigator. You're not a patient, are you? No. I'm the author of a book that Yermi once found important. How does that work? Are you part of this memory as well? Is this even a memory? I think calling me a manifestation of Yermi's subconscious would be more correct. And so is the convent of Tarawea. I'm a man Yermi has never met. And we are in a place that he has never been. Okay. So are you here to guide me or something? I have no more purpose than you do. I simply am. I will happily help you, of course, if I'm able. If you are already somehow part of Jeremy, why did he want to come here? Isn't he sort of here already? Jeremy wanted to come here because it's a representation of his mind at peace. When Dr. Gray asks him to find his focus during his sessions, this far-flung convent is what Jeremy imagines. He is under the impression that if he could physically come here, he would reach a perfect equanimity. A spiritual apotheosis. You don't think it would work? Jeremy subconsciously knows it's just wishful thinking. He can't come here. Despite the pathways opened by the dark man between their seto and Jeremy's psyche, it's simply not possible. But I'm here. <laughs> Indeed. It's a shame it's just another place for you, detective. Otherwise, you could have become a Buddha. Always a bridesmaid, never a blushing bride. Am I right? <laughs> yes, I suppose so. You'll have to chase enlightenment elsewhere. So what's the next best thing? What can I do here? You should seek out the convent library and try to find the truth about Yermi's relationship with the Dark Man. It's the sort of knowledge he represses and is unable to reflect on. Will it tell me how to break the pact? Perhaps. At least you'll have something to confront Yermi with. Wait, why can't you just tell me? I don't know such things. You'd be better off consulting the text of Dr. Freud, if you want such answers. <laughs> no thanks, I hate shrinks. There is another thing you should know about the library. He is here as well. The Dark Man has been working his way through the text for a long, long time. He's here? How am I supposed to get past him? Be careful, detective. Oh, jeez. Just perfect. that I went through the night with the restless crowds. He was a kind of itinerant showman who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear. The New Orleans address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly the Prext shipping company pressing their contribution. Hey. What? I hope you found what you were looking for. 
I fear there is no going back. I was so close. There must be something I can work with. Come on, Garmy, think. Think! The ship had come. Prankst. Right. Good luck. You're here, Detective. Sitting all alone in a place like this. I'd never live it down if the papers got wind of it. Hey. Ruth, right? Oh, don't pretend you don't know. I'm sure you have a whole file on me by now, Detective. I suppose we weren't formally introduced. I'm Ruth Talon. Miss Ruth Talon, in case you're wondering. Edward Carnby. Enchanté. Are you sure? I had too many already. Nice. It's good. I know. I have great taste, Detective. I heard you're trying to break Jeremy's promise to the Dark Man. Yeah. Do you know anything about that kind of stuff? No. But it makes you wonder. If he made a promise, can't he simply stand by his words? Look, I'm just trying to get Jeremy out of a bad deal, so he'll come back with us to New Orleans. Well, if all fails... What are you doing? <laughs> It's a sign of submission to the Dark Man. I saw it in a dream once. What? You don't know the Prext Shipping Company by any chance. I do. They made big money during the war. But their waterfront office is just over there. How did you do that? Do what, detective? <laughs> Bonne chance. Hey, have you seen Emily Hartwood anywhere? Are you trying to make me jealous, detective? <laughs> no, I haven't seen your doll anywhere. You want to tell me what this is all about? Welcome, Detective. To the greatest show this side of the Mississippi. Now the hotel, the Black Pharaoh, the ancient magician who lived a thousand lives and wore a thousand masks. I can see why you settled on calling him the Dark Man. Saves your breath. So you got scared by a stage magician and now he's living inside your head. You can mock me, detective. But you would be the crazy one to think his presence can be ignored. Look where we are. We didn't get to finish our last conversation, did we? You were about to tell me how to break the contract with the Dark Man. No. Can't. We would turn and loose on the world. So many innocent would die. But there is a way to break out of the deal. There is. You offered me a way out. Steps to take. What are they? You'll never find them. They're forever entombed in his sunken desert temple. Jeremy, I'm not your enemy. Tell me where to go. How do I find the temple? 
No, we can't. I have to make this sacrifice. God damn it, Jeremy. I'm gonna save you. Don't worry. Acknowledge psychological trauma, break through barriers of self-deceit, tempermanic behavior. These are the dark man's terms. The contract. Huh? What are you doing? Oh, I found something. Great. Was it alcohol? God, no. I just got the wind knocked out of me. I think I know how to break the contract with the Dark Man. What exactly does that mean? Everything going back to normal. Uh, all right. Uh, I found some more information on Dorsetto and the patients. There are some seriously strange things going on here. I'm pretty sure two of the patients are dead and maybe even the clerk. Oh, yeah. I kind of just gave up on worrying about that. Well, just keep your eyes open, I suppose. What were you doing again? Jeremy made a pact with the Dark Man to keep all the madness locked inside your setup. All right. I'm gonna break it. I just have to... Where is it? Where's the talisman? It's around your neck. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. I worry, detectives. Don't, I'm fine. I worry that you're not much help on this case. But at least you're a good distraction. Trust me, you're getting your money's worth. At this rate, I'm an absolute bargain. <sighs> Got to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You went into that deck, Bella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, like us. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. He don't need to know about all that. <laughs> Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, Detective Combi seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready in case he starts anything. Detective Conby. Good to see you again. Solved the case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink. A tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory, the usual. Then why all the excitement? There is just something about tonight, something that's different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. 
That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. Oh, God damn it, Grace. Stay put for once. I can't believe I didn't recognize him. I looked a little different back then, I suppose. Was any of this real? How do you mean? This day just... So much is happening. I can't... I think I've lost my head. Do you need me to apologize? I mean... I am sorry. I don't think I need to begin to explain. You, you're just a kid, Grace. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for it to happen. Lies. More lies. No, really. I thought I was being a good guy by handing you over to your mother. I didn't know. I, I couldn't have known that she wouldn't care about you. I don't know how this works. What is this for? Some form of admission of guilt. Maybe acceptance. It's what the dark man wants. I guess we just watch my father die again then. You think he's alive? I know he is. He's down there, scared that he won't be able to get out. That he will drown with his daughter again. What are you saying? We gotta save him! We? Do it yourself! I'm down there with him, remember? Are you okay? Don't leave me alone. What the hell have you been doing? What's going on here? Look at this mess! I, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. Don't make me kick you out of this house! Now get out! <sighs> hey, Detective. Mr. Carnby. I'm really worried about you. I'm okay. I just need to catch my breath for a moment. This place? It's... There are some very disturbed figures around here. And I don't think it's just the patients. I've been reading some things about how Dorsetto has a deranging effect on people. I think it might explain... things. What? Just take it easy, okay? I'm gonna go find a way into Dr. Gray's apartment. I wanna know what he's hiding. Emily, don't worry. I think I'm close. I'm gonna set everything right. Just be careful. Ah! 
I was supposed to die. What does that mean? Bet you were supposed ah. to die. I'm the catalyst. I had to die to make the story. Ah. Thirty years ago, Frederic needed me to die. You're not making any sense, Jeremy. Come back. Find hey. your focus. Hey! I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. Hey! I escaped hey. my doom. My destiny. Again, find hey. your focus. Hey, I'm right here. What the hell is going on? Oh, everything is wrong. Nothing is in place. Hey! I'm right here! Calm down, Mr. Conby. What do you want? Did... Were you... Were you not talking to Jeremy right now? I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? No. Actually, actually I don't... I don't think so. Well, maybe. I'm gonna go... Look for Jeremy. Good. Let me know if you find him. Detective, am I glad to see you. Lock the door, will you? I don't think Dr. Gray would appreciate us sneaking around. What's going on here? This feels so strange. There's a book missing. Have you found anything? What? Y yeah, uh, yeah, I've seen some things. Okay, let me know if there is anything you want to talk about. What did you do? I was just... Rearranging the books. Well, come on, let's check it out. I think I'm beginning to understand. Dr. Gray is dealing with some kind of mass delusion. That mark on the floor looks like talisman positions, but from which direction should I look at it? What were you saying about mass delusion? Dorsetto seems to have a deranging effect on people living close by. It has a history of creating cults devoted to some nature goddess. Even the name Dorsetto refers to the cult existing here before the Civil War. Dorsetto was the name of an ancient fertility goddess worshipped in Syria. Dr. Gray and his friends, however, seem to prefer... the Black Goat of the Woods with a Thousand Young, or Shubnigroth. And that name can only have come from my uncle's twisted mind. I think all of them are in this cult business? Even Jeremy? I'm not sure any of them have a choice at this point. We just need to find a way to stop all of this. Has that been there this whole time?
Hello? The death of Khan B. Who is this? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the Dark Man. You can't save him. Well, I've done everything he wanted so far, and there's just one more thing on the list. I expect him to keep his promise and return Jeremy unharmed. Get out, detective. While you still can. You okay? You look a little frazzled. Just... stupid telephone. I know. I tried calling the police earlier. The telephone is completely dead. It's not... Yeah, no, the telephone isn't working. <gasps> Miss Hartwood, I think you're gonna want to see this. Is there something in the closet? Yeah, there is. You don't see the very obvious gate leading to whatever Jeremy's madness is serving up next? I don't understand. Are you making some kind of fashion metaphor? I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Can you just tell me what you're doing? You don't see this. It's fine. It's fine. Catch you later. Are you going inside the closet? Yeah. You got a problem with that? No. Do what you think is right, detective. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Goodbye, Miss Harwood. Hey, you! What are you doing here? What is this place? Turn back, detective. You're not wanted here. Whoa, take it easy. I'm not your enemy. Oh, you're wrong, detective. You're wrong. Stars align, Jeremy, or ah, maybe that is what you need. To temper that mania of yours.
aren't you happy? Stupid charlatan. What more do you want from me? You want me to lose my mind? Oh, my lord! Doctor! Baptiste! Quick! Jesus. What were you thinking, compadre? I thought you'd be knocked out for the rest of the night. <laughs> Come on out and join us, will you? I'll save you some gumbo. Good to have you back. You gave us all a good scare. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Sorry for manhandling you, but you're being violent. You stabbed Jeremy and then punched Dr. Gray. Are they okay? Jeremy's a little strange. But everything's back to normal. Really? All thanks to you, Combat. You want to try standing up? Well, if it isn't the hero of the day. How are you feeling, Detective? Never better. How about you two? Hey, Jeremy, I didn't do too much damage, did I? Things are fine. Very quiet. What's up with him? Painkillers? No. You see, despite you having the finesse of a one-eyed butcher, you managed to lobotomize dear Jeremy. I did what? It's actually quite impressive. It's not like I hadn't considered it myself. I just wish Jeremy could have been helped without reducing his personality to that of an oyster. But he's gonna live. Of course. As long as someone keeps feeding him, he'll outlive the best of us. Does Emily know about Jeremy's condition? Yes. She seems to be handling it quite well under the circumstances. Good to see you back on your feet, Detective. Have some gumbo. Thanks. I'll save it for later. Tell me, what the hell's about to happen here? Every year we have a little turn-the-page ceremony by the tree. It's symbolical. It's like life has its cycles of grief and happiness. You know, just like a tree facing the seasons. Things change, but remain the same. Hey, kid. What are you up to? Preparing for the ceremony. I don't want to disappoint Mother. That is one impressive tree. More impressive than you could ever imagine. What are you looking for? Just keeping an eye out for the stone. 
Radio says it could be a wild one. Hey, Ruth. Glad to see you made it back to Dorsetto. You too, detective. Make sure to stay for the festivities. It's no Mardi Gras, but it ain't bad. Seems like everyone's in a pretty good mood. The Eve of St. John is the most important date of the whole year. It's the only day when the black goat of the woods tends to her young. I'm gonna go look for Emily. Don't worry about her. She wouldn't leave without you, would she? Everyone knows what to do. Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, you need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Hell, their praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Hear us, Stop! Are you crazy? This is what he's been having coffee. Grace, stop! Shoot the crap! Shoot the crap! Come with me! Get over here! Jeremy, come with me! Jeremy, come here! No! There has to be a doctor, blood! We're I can't let that monster leave Dorsetto. I have to stop it.
check there. Oh, what the hell was that? I try to tell you. There was so much evidence. Their devotion to the black boat was like nothing I've ever seen before. I felt so dumb believing any of it, but I'm glad I did. Are you okay? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Well, you're welcome, buddy. How are you doing, sweetie? I kind of like it. You ruined everything, but I'm not mad. All right, you ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. We're leaving. Can I come? I thought you said you didn't need saving. Don't leave her. She's important. Of course we're taking her with us.
So, your uncle, what's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him, watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. But Jeremy didn't kill himself. Is that why he's at your setup? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis figuring you might stumble upon some cure. You mentioned the letter. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to get him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Here we are. My uncle's not well, Mr. Carnby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part in this? You couldn't get a cab? I just wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What? exactly are we gonna do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first.
Hello? It's so quiet. Where is everyone? It's a big place. Maybe they're on the other side of the house. Stay here. I'll have a look. Wait, don't! No. Excuse me? Do you know where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? Well, of course not. McCarthy, what are you doing? I told you not to lose sight of the girl. Don't you worry, Mags. I'll find that little rascal. Who are you people? What are you doing here? I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. His name is Jeremy Hartwood. What are you doing, child? You shouldn't be alone. Go find McCarthy. Who are you? Are you here for the Fay Dodo? Go upstairs now. My name is Emily Hartwood. I, I'm, I'm the niece of Jeremy Hartwood. This is Detective Carnby. The police? Why are you here? No, I'm a private investigator. Sorry to bother you. My client's worried about her uncle. He's a patient here at Tercetto. If you don't mind, could you direct us where to find him? No, I can't. Jeremy has gone missing. If you leave your information, I will make sure to contact you. Wait, he ran away? No, he won't leave the house. He's around here somewhere, and both of our orderlies are looking for him. That's unacceptable. Where's Dr. Gray? I want to speak with him immediately. Fine. I'll ask him. Wait here, and don't touch anything. Do you want to see Jeremy's room? Can you show us? Follow me. Thank you. Strange kid. Mm. Let's look around, see what we can find. Have you ever seen anything like this? Looks like a talisman. You mean like this one? Find me a knife to cut the canvas. I want to take this with me. You want to take the painting? Sure, I'll find one. Should keep it safe for you. Do you want to carry it or should I? Miss Hartwood? Emily? I'll take it. Thank you. We're done here, right? I'm not sure. I don't know how to do any of this. Listen, I think we should talk to Dr. Gray. He must know something about what's going on around here. Okay. Let's do that. Come on, I don't want to be here all night. Detective Carnby? W where did...
that you? Batiste? How'd you get here? I was back at Dorsetto. Looking for my Uncle Jeremy? Jeremy's your uncle. I didn't know. Why would you? You're still working at Dorsetto? Yeah, both me and Lada stuck around. We're real orderless now. Y you remember my sister Lada, don't you? What happened, Batiste? How are we here? You know about the dark man haunting your uncle? I'm familiar with his mental state. I think we all in his head somehow. Because these streets are real, but they're not like on any map. Nah, this is like when you remember something, but in the wrong way. Do you know how to get back to Dorsetto? I'm not safe here. Truer words have yet been spoken, Mrs. Marcus. Don't call me that. It's Miss Emily Hartwood. There's no reason to call me anything else. I'm sorry, Miss Emily. I'm just trying to tell you like it is. This place ain't safe for no one. There's evil hiding in the dark. How do I get back? Only Jeremy knows how. He has this juju necklace guiding him. You mean this talisman? Mm-hmm. Just like it. He says it's been protecting him. Ever since he got it from Miss Jackson down the street. You know where it came from? Have you been there? I was there no more than one hour ago looking for Jeremy. Locked it up to keep the ghouls from getting inside. You can have the key if you want. Thank you. I'll take a look. Stay safe, miss. Good to see you again, Miss Hartwood. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. She also alerted me that you brought a detective with you. I'm very curious to hear what this is all about. You don't remember me, do you, Miss Hartwood? We met at your family's house in the Garden District, when your uncle was about to be admitted under my care. No, I remember. Sorry. I'm not really feeling well. Oh, well, in that case, have a seat. Let me make you a drink. I don't seem to have made much of an impression on you. On the other hand, I can vividly recall you and your parents. Because of our cheerful disposition, I'm sure. You are far too intelligent to think that. You come from a joyless family, Miss Hartwood. The only amusement I took from my visit was discovering that the young lady's drink was an old-fashioned. Very astute. Is that supposed to make you seem attentive or intelligent? Whatever you prefer. Are you ready to tell me why you are here, Miss Hartwood? And why you brought a detective? I received a letter from my uncle. He seemed certain that he was in danger here. If I find out you're treating him badly, I'll be taking him back with me to New Orleans. Really? Is he going to live with you in your tiny garçonniere? That would be a spectacular way to ratify your spinsterhood. Because you are well aware that your father would never let him back in his house. No, I have it. Maybe you can bring him back up north. You've been wanting to move back for quite a few years, haven't you? You always preferred your mother's side of the family. Jeremy is free to leave with you. I won't object. However, there is one problem, as you might have learned. He is, in fact, missing. Do you know where he could have gone? No, I'm afraid I don't. I have my staff looking for him. I'm sure he will show up eventually. Especially if he learns that you are here. He is quite fond of you. What can you tell me about his condition? I never heard a proper diagnosis. What is your medical opinion of him? Well, let me think. He is an anxious man. Depressed, even. He suffers from a perceived lack of order in his inner and outer life. He constantly complains about events not presenting themselves according to their divine nature. In the Dark Man? Hard to tell if it was ever anything specific. Jeremy uses the Dark Man as a psychological scapegoat to avoid facing the truth that he is in any way at fault. You don't think there can be any truth to the Dark Man's... supernatural existence? Why would you ask that? I... Can we ever be sure? 
If the Dark Man is some sort of evil presence that is in possession of Jeremy? Well... I assure you, any evidence that you experience supporting that claim is purely delusional. Don't get caught up in mass hysteria, Miss Hartwood. You wouldn't want to take your uncle's place in this hospital, would you? Uh, I'll be leaving now, Doctor. I need to keep looking for my uncle. Do so, Miss Hartwood. I'll let you know if he shows up. Detective Carnby! God, I'm... I'm glad to see you. I was afraid you had left. Me? You're the one who just disappeared. It's... hard to explain. I think I blacked out. I, it was like I went somewhere else. It's okay, miss. You're clearly upset. No, it's... I don't know what's happening. I, this is a very stressful situation for you, I understand. Ugh, no, you don't understand. Just take a deep breath. Why don't you sit down, smoke some of the Perique? If you want, I could even drive you back to New Orleans. I just want to have a talk with Dr. Gray first. I want to stay. I found a talisman just like the one in the painting. I think I might be able to figure out where Tarawea is, where Jeremy wanted to go. That's great. Just stay out of trouble, okay? Let me handle the investigation. I'm not crazy, Detective. Not yet. <laughs> Catch you later. Good evening, Miss Hartwood. That is your name, isn't it? I would be terribly embarrassed if it wasn't. You're right. Emily Hartwood, Jeremy's niece. Nice to meet you. Ruth. Ruth Talon. you're smoking? <laughs> How terribly quaint. Maybe so, but I like it. Would you care to share some? That smell is making me feel very nostalgic. Is it all that you hope for? I enjoy your light mockery, Miss Hartwood. I can tell we would make great friends. How flattering. Too bad you're locked up in this place. <laughs> your insincerity is really refreshing. I wish you were mad as I am, then you could stay. Give it a few years and I might just be. Lunacy is one of my family's few privileges. Oh, good. I'll be looking forward to it. You don't know anything about what happened to Jeremy, do you? Everyone here is really strange, and it's hard to know what to make of anything you hear. Occasionally, it sounds quite exciting, though. Good versus evil and all that. I'm sorry, but... I don't think I have anything useful to share. It doesn't matter. Thank you for the much needed break. Bon voyage.
We are what are you doing sneaking around? You almost scared me to death. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb your ritual. I wouldn't have guessed voodoo was in practice at a place like this. The doctor may be all about science, but I know these roots have power. Do you know what's going on here? I have a feeling Dorsetta was cursed. There are several players with stakes in this game. Dorsetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. And it would all be a lot better if you could get your uncle out sooner than later. That's all I'm trying to do. I wish you the best of luck, Miss Harwood. I really mean that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to look after my gombo. Jeremy, you dropped your... <gasps> Mrs. Marcus? Get off of me! What are you doing here? Trying to find my uncle. Jeremy is your uncle? Could you please? Thank you. And it's Miss Hartwood. You don't remember me? I remember you, Mr. Bois. I met your brother, Batiste, earlier. I suppose he hadn't found Jeremy either then. We spread out to find him. Can I have this? I'm trying to get to Tarawea. Fine. Believe the rest. I just want Jeremy to come looking. We have to leave before it comes inside. What? Where? Come quick. Oh, God damn my soul. Come on, Grace. I'm too tired for games. I'll even let's play with my jackknife. Oh, good evening. <laughs> you haven't seen a little girl by any chance, have you? I don't think so. Uh, you would have known if you did. The only kid crazy enough to be in this place. She's not in her room, then? <laughs> that would be a first. Always running around causing trouble. She's very hard to pin down, that one. You want to see up? I'm good, thank you. Well, I should be going then. <clears throat> Unless there's anything you need from me. I just want to find my uncle before anything happens to him. Oh, 
Don't worry, miss. He'll show up. <laughs> he is much too lily livered to kill himself. Why would he? <laughs> it's his greatest ambition, didn't you know? Take care now. well? Huh? You're a governess. Did you teach those clawing Casino kids how to play the piano? How do you know about that? Just because grown-ups don't notice children doesn't mean we don't notice you. Yes. I taught them some piano. Are you any good at it? Not good enough to play a broken one. It fell from the attic. Brought half the ceiling down. It was Jeremy's fault, wasn't it? Nobody knows what happened. But you're not wrong. Ah! What are you doing? <clears throat> go now. See you around. Emily, is that you? Jeremy. What are you doing here? Oh, you sounded so miserable in your letter. I've come to take you away from here. I can't believe I made such a foolish mistake. All I wanted was for you to stay away. What do you mean? I bargained with the Dark Man. A pact to keep New Orleans safe with my own life as tribute. The Dark Man isn't real, Jeremy. There is nothing he can do to hurt you. How do you think any of this is happening? How do you still not trust my words? Fine. Then let me help. Don't be foolish. He will bury you next to me in his sunken temple for an eternity. I don't care. I'll find a way. I have my own talisman and I know about Tarawaya. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't speak. Who's in here? Show yourself. You know who, Emily? He took your grandfather. No, I mean it. Who's in here? I can feel someone's in here. Why do you want to go there, Jeremy? You should not have come, Emily. How do you know my name? Have we met? In a manner of speaking. As a manifestation of Jeremy's deepest desires, I am to you unfamiliar. Yet I know of you. Are you Jeremy? Is that what you're saying? I am only his subconscious thoughts. 
I cannot speak for his totality. How come you have a Spanish accent? And what is this place? Is this Tarawea? This is indeed the fabled convent of Tarawea, where Yermi goes to find peace during his sessions with Dr. Gray. It's all fantasy then. Based on the things he has read and seen. And that includes you? Yes. My name is Juan Luis Jorge. Yermi once read a book of mine. It stuck with him. Can you help me break the pact with the Dark Man so we can leave Dorsetto? Yermi doesn't want you to. He wants to honor his word to the Dark Man. Why? What's the point? I don't understand what the pact is for. The people of Dorsetto are calling upon evil to enter this world. Your uncle offered his soul to the Dark Man to contain this disaster. What? No, that doesn't make any sense. The pact will be fulfilled at dawn. As the sun rises, Yermi will forever be entombed in his sunken desert temple. As promised, the Dark Man shall quarantine and starve the evil inside their seto. What about all the patients and the staff? They will not stand the chance. That's unacceptable. How could Yermi agree to this? Desperation, of course. Yermi did not choose martyrdom lightly. Well, nothing is lost yet. I'm sure I can find a way to break the pact and save Jeremy. And hopefully the people at Dorsetto. What even is this evil you're talking about? I don't know much. I think some nightmarish entity from the bayou. I'll just have to deal with that later. First, I have to get Jeremy out of his deal. What? Did you run out of arguments? You're actually quite inspiring, Miss Emily. If we put Jeremy's feelings aside... I would have to say I agree with you. Really? You might just be able to save the old man from himself. I think you should take a look in the convent library. Try to find the truth about Yermi's relationship with the Dark Man. Okay. You should know that you won't be alone in those grand halls. The Dark Man has been reading those books for years. He's here? You'll have to be very careful. Of course. I... I can be careful. Good luck, Miss Emily. It was in the hot autumn that I went through the night with the restless crowds. He was a kind of itinerant showman who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear. The New Orleans address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly the Prext Shipping Company pressing their contribution. Emily! My head won. His breath replacing mine. You should not have come at me. Well, if it isn't my new best friend. Come, join me for some giggle water. Ah, uh, Ruth? Oh, Miss Hartwood, don't tell me you've been out swinging without me. Ruth, what is this place? Where are we? Have you never been to the Maccabean before? Goodness me. Tell me, Miss Hartwood, have you ever considered going out for an evening? Are we in New Orleans? Oh, who can tell anymore? I just went inside the Grand Parlor and suddenly here I am. The Grand Parlor? Can I get back to Dorsetto from here? <laughs> Are you sure you want to? We could stay here and drink the night away. 
How about a gin fizz? If this is New Orleans, maybe I should go further. Find that magic show the book was talking about. But there was no address, just Preg's shipping company. Oh, is this about where Jeremy met the dark man? How do you know about that? <laughs> Jeremy talked a lot about the dark man. I always felt a bit envious. How so? If an all-powerful entity showed me any interest, I'd at least hear him out. I'm sure he has plenty to offer. I don't think you'd want that, Ruth. We're too sweet for such darkness. <laughs> oh, please. What kind of blue nose do you take me for? I relish the darkness. I think it suits me. <laughs> You don't happen to know how to find the Preg Shipping Company, do you? Of course. Their office is just over there. Whoa, what happened? You just got lucky. <laughs> A bientôt, Mademoiselle Emily. Hey, do you know where my uncle is? No, but I bet you're close. Shouldn't have come. Don't say that. You needed my help. All I wanted was to keep people away from Dissetto. Especially you, Emily. You're the only one in the family who forgave me for choosing old age over death. Father still cares for you? He is paying for your treatment at Dissetto. To get rid of me! That's the only reason anyone's at this chateau. Someone in the family thought you were becoming an embarrassment. Help me get you out of this mess, Jeremy. I want to take you away. Your father would send me right back. What if I take you up north, to Kingsport? I know Mother still has family up there. I've been thinking about going for a while now. <gasps> I haven't been to Massachusetts in years. I still paint from memory, you know? That old lighthouse makes for a great motif. Your father and I would go almost every summer. Then when our great uncle died, we stopped going back. What is there to be done about the Dark Man? He's the one holding you back, right? You feel like you can't leave without paying your debt to him. The Dark Man has been with me since I was 12 years old. <laughs> he was standing right on that stage right over there. For a brief moment, his gaze held mine. And that was it. I recognized him for what he was. The heart with Geis embodied in flesh. I thought it was my turn. But I was only there to be mocked. Instead, his attention moved on to my father sitting next to me. I turned to him and saw his face. The widest shade of pale I've ever seen. He bit off his tongue that night and suffocated. What can be done, Jeremy? Please. There's a way. Two ways, to be exact. One worse than the other. A written contract now buried inside his sunken temple. Don't you remember what it said? <gasps> I don't want to. Try, Jeremy. What did the contract say? No, we can't. We can't let Norman suffer that blight. I have to make this sacrifice. What are you talking about? Is this the thing from the bayou? Juan said something. Ah!
Acknowledge psychological trauma. Break through the barriers of self-deceit, temperamental behavior. Is this it? Is this the contract? Jeremy, how much pain and suffering you could have prevented. Emily, what are you doing? Detective, uh, how is your investigation going? Well, I still have no clue where Jeremy is, but I think I know why he's hiding. This place is full of lunatics planning to perform some kind of ritual tonight. Well, that sounds ridiculous. I rather would have just a day ago. It gets worse. I have reason to believe they killed anyone who didn't want to go along with the plan. Detective, have you encountered any monsters tonight? I just told you, I think they killed people. Beauregard, the author, Perosi, the singer, Mr. Waits, the clerk, Mr. Chance, the gardener, they're all missing. No, I mean, have you fired your gun tonight? Of course not. They wouldn't just kill outsiders like that. It would bring too much attention but you should keep your eyes open. So you haven't seen anything strange been anywhere else? What are you trying to tell me, Emily? Are you in some kind of danger? Let me drive you back to New Orleans. I think I have enough. You know, at least get the police to take a look at this case. No, I'm fine. Thank you, detective. I'll find your uncle, Miss Harwood. Just stay out of trouble. If we could just get rid of Jeremy, everything will go back to normal. That reminds me. I saw Miss Emily earlier. You remember her? You know she's Jeremy's niece. She's looking for me. That's right. She's helping us in her own way. As long as she don't stand in the way of the mother of a thousand young. <laughs> I don't think she knows or cares about that. She just here for Jim. <laughs> I've been more worried about that Detective Carmen fella. He's been snooping around asking all kinds of questions. God, it hurts. I wish you would stop doing that. Gives me the heebie jeebies. Hey, little lady, how's your evening been going? Ups and downs, I suppose. I hear that. We all live in the life of an elevator operator. Are you all right, sweetie? Do you want to see my mask, miss? I'm making it for St. John's. Uh, how did you... Is that supposed to be my... Ow! You should learn your place, little girl. Why are you acting this way? What did I ever do to you? Grace! Grace! American expeditionary forces faced considerable John? losses in France. The brave men fallen on these elite John. fields will forever be oh, as John. not of just Europe, but the world. What's the matter, Emily? President Woodrow Wilson spoke to our I can't do this. war widows, asking them to stand tall. What's the matter? Their I can't take you dying again. Speak of them proudly and remember. I'm them still proudly. hurting. What's the matter, Emily? But the war effort in Europe is not our own. Your death was just so... Death numbers on the home Shameful. front are on the rise due to Unfair. the influenza known as the Spanish flu. 
the New Orleans City Council decided to open yet another emergency hospital in the old Dersetto Plantation. Two seventeen. Go, oh, John. I didn't know this is where you would end up. I didn't want to know. I stopped visiting you because I couldn't stand the indignity of your awful illness. I was ashamed of you. Ashamed of myself. Forgive me. Please, John. Let me go. <laughs> Are we done here? Is this what you wanted? They're coming. I have freed hellish forces and now the price must be paid. The Aceto is the prey of evil. The sun has set. They will find my body, but will not have my soul. I can imagine the master's fury and the terror in the hearts of his slaves. I hear their footsteps. Some may understand what I've done. May God forgive me. Farewell. What would happen if I refuse? Would the whole world come apart? Or would everything conspire to make a new story? Maybe one where I live. I'm sorry, Frederick. to die to make the story happen. Story? 
What are you referring to, Jeremy? Thirty years ago, Frederic needed me to die. Jeremy! You're not making any sense. Yeah. Come back. Find your focus. Uncle? I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. I escaped my doom. <laughs> Destiny! Again, find your focus. Jeremy! Now everything is wrong. <laughs> Nothing is in place. Hey, listen to me. We're gonna drown. Calm down, Miss Hartwood. You're not in any danger. <sighs> but... Jeremy... He was here, wasn't he? Miss Hartwood, I am beginning to suspect your family curse is catching up with you. Have you ever talked to a doctor about your condition? No. No, I, I was just confused. I thought I saw him for a moment. I'm fine. I'll let you be. Miss, I want you to know I'm here to help, if you need me. Miss Hartwood, lock the door, will you? I'd rather not run into fear, Dr. Gray, if I can help it. This feels strange. So very strange. You okay? This place? It's like something from my childhood. It's just the private study of a very peculiar man. There's a book missing. Secret door. Looks like it. Careful. Let me go first. Talking. Great job, Emily. Good to finally meet you, Mr. Hart. <laughs> Found anything? Oh, Dr. Gray's in so deep, I knew it. He's as mad as his patients. I mean, look at this. She who can till the soil of this sick world and begin again. The black goat of the woods with a thousand young. Absolute insanity. This has something to do with the numbers for the talisman. The snake dagger, a monograph. I have the strangest sensation that this is somehow Jeremy's room. What? No. This is Dr. Gray's private quarters. Should I even be doing this? Do I want to know? Jesus Christ, why would you paint this, Jeremy? What on earth possessed you? Oh God. I believe I didn't see that before.
Hello? Who's there? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the Dark Man. You can't save him. Jeremy is with the Dark Man? Where? Who is he? What, what is the Dark Man? The Hardwood Curse. He will come for you too. Now what's this? You heard the telephone ring, right? No, the telephone's cut off. I tried calling the police earlier. Yeah, that's what I figured. Hey, Mr. Carnby? What? Nothing, right? That's a closet. That's right, detective. I'll see you later. I have to finish this. You're going inside the closet? I know what it looks like, but I can't explain it, much less justify it. All right. You do what you have to do, miss. Goodbye, detective. is going to be in the middle of your existence, Jeremy. We set everything in order.
understand why are you here? I did everything you wanted to break the pact. What else can I do? Wait, it did work. That's why you're coming after me. You're in my head now. In that case, I hope you enjoy your stay. Emily, stop! Don't worry. We got you. painted the foyer with your own blood and guts. <laughs> Good to see you still in one piece. Stick around, will you? It's gonna be an exciting night. Good to see you made it, miss. And all that ruckus, a lot of give you a healthy dose of that sleeping juice. Wasn't sure you'd be waking up again. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Tried to shoot yourself. Sorry for the manhandling, but we just wanted to save you. You also stabbed Jeremy in the eye. Is he all right? Mm. He's a little strange, but everything else is back to normal. Really? I broke the pact? I don't know what you did, but you worked. Let's see you standing up, miss. Jeremy, are you okay? I'm so sorry for hurting you. How can you ever forgive me? Emily, I missed you so. I do hope you'll stay with me for a while. Uncle, what's wrong? I is it anesthesia? He, he seems so meek. I wish that was the case. It turns out that you managed to lobotomize him. It's actually quite impressive considering your technique. This is permanent? You sacrificed a piece of his mind to save the whole. It's a little like treating a bad knee by cutting off the leg. It's blunt, but it works. That's terrible. Perhaps. But at least he won't suffer anymore. Do you remember the dark man, Jeremy? Ah, yes. Where did he go? I hope he is doing all right. You see, with a violent stab, you made any future treatment quite redundant. I assume you will be bringing him with you back to New Orleans. I will. I just need to find Detective Carnby. I'll be back soon, Jeremy. Then we'll go back to the city. How fun. I do like riding in the motor car. Is there any chance he'll relapse back to his previous condition? None at all. He is forever cured from all worries and other difficult feelings. Have you seen Detective Carnby? I'm sure he's around here somewhere, poking and prodding. Well, 
done, Miss Hartwood. You officially made Dorsetto the dullest place in existence again. Oh, thank you. Happy to be of service. Have you seen Detective Carnby anywhere? <laughs> Still chasing that lovable palooka around, are you? I'm sure you'll find him. Can I write to you when I get back to town? <laughs> you are too sweet, Miss Hartwood. I'll look forward to reading all about your tedious routine. Looks like a storm's coming. Radio says it could get real bad. Floodings and such. I uh, should probably get moving before the weather gets worse. Have you seen Detective Carnby? Not for a while, but he says he's gonna wait for you. Take care, Batiste. You too, Miss Emily. Good to see you're still with us, miss. Are you hungry? No, thank you. I'm still a bit woozy. Ooh, is that gumbo? I make it every year. We set up a little feast by the wishing tree and start a new year together. Have you seen Mr. Carnby? I haven't seen him for a while. Maybe he left? Do you know what's about to happen here? Just a little ceremony we do each year on the eve of St. John. We raise our glasses to the old wishing tree here and ask for a better year. Is it all for show? Or do you actually believe the tree can help? Well, I guess some of us do. I mean, Lottie and Mags are pretty invested. Taking it a little too far, you know. Sounds like you might be in a cult. <laughs> yeah, I can see how you think that. I almost forgot this was here. The very heart of Deceto, you know. Almost time to call on her. What is it that you do? Is it like the voodoo rituals you read about in the papers? I don't know, miss. I never saw one up close. My family has always been suspicious of the hoodoo. You haven't seen Detective Carnby, have you? No. And I hope he stays away. I don't think he would understand what is about to happen here. What are you doing? Preparing for the ceremony. This time she will come. I'm sure of it. Who's coming, Grace? The Black Goat of the Woods. The mother of a thousand young. I hope you find what you're looking for, Grace. Whatever it is that you need. That's a terrible thing to say. Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. 
Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Hell, oh, there are praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever there Ever praises, there praises, 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 pra
Emily, are you all right? I don't understand anything that just happened. What was that? The whole gang was a cult dedicated to something called the Black Goat of the Woods. I've been trying to gather as much information as I could. It was only after you started talking about monsters that I thought maybe there was some truth to all the nonsense I was finding. Where's Jeremy? Uncle, are you all right? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Don't say that. You made it out. Be happy, okay? Hey, kid. You doing all right? It wasn't what I expected, but you can't always get what you want. All right, you ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. Let's go. Can I come? Don't leave her. You have to take her to Hell's Kitchen. What on earth are you talking about? Thank you.